If you have a story you would like to share with me and that you would like me to read on this channel, simply click the link below to go to whatlurksbeneath.com and click here on Submit Your Story. If approved, your story will be added to the countless others in the database for others to read, and will also be premiered in a future episode on this channel. And now, back to the show. I read about the Minnesota Bigfoot story and wanted to share a very similar one with you. I hope you enjoy it. I cannot say that I believe in the big creatures with hairy bodies, but I have a story to share. I lived on the edge of a federally owned forest in Minnesota for well over 20 years now. There's always a lot of wildlife, so I'm used to hearing strange animals and seeing deer and raccoons, etc. One day, my husband and I were sitting on our back deck watching the deer meander around. We would often see woodchucks, rabbits, foxes, a whole lot of birds. It was early morning, and we had sat down to have coffee. As we're talking, the deer seemed to all move in the same direction, as if away from something. We looked to see what they were looking at and noticed a figure walking on the trail that we call Deer Trail. My husband claims it was a bear. I said no way. It was too tall and moved closer. It looked like a huge man, but walking on two feet. We both just stared in disbelief. It was taller than my husband, very visibly, which he six four, swinging its arms with wiggle to the hips. We had the window open, and we're just about to say something to each other when my husband demands we close the window so it doesn't hear us. I don't want to look anymore. I closed the window, ran inside and peeked through the blinds. It stopped and looked around, squatted down, and picked something up, then moved away. The deer were still all huddled together, and we couldn't see what it was squatting to pick up, but the deer certainly reacted to whatever it was. They seemed really spooked. What really got my husband was that it must have smelt the coffee and maybe that's what attracted it. Okay, funny I know, but maybe Bigfoot is a morning person. I have a story for you. Maybe you can help me make sense of it. Last October, I was hunting in the Pine Island State Forest here in west central Minnesota, near the town of Rush City, probably 80 miles west of Minneapolis. It is posted, so you need a permit. Anyhow, I had scouted a spot, a place where I had seen deer and turkey for years now, so I knew the location was prime, right on the edge of a smaller lake. Not a body of water really, but just a large marshy field that was totally surrounded by thicker woods. It was still morning and I was walking, noiseless, with my bow drawn. I had literally heard a cracking sound, like something underfoot, so I stopped my tracks and stood still. I thought I had stepped on a branch, but when I looked down where I had stepped, I ended up seeing something that I never want to see again. Now. It was about 50 yards from me, and appeared to be squatting down on its hind legs, eating something, what was probably a small animal, and staring right back into my eyes. It appeared to be about 5 feet tall, and reminded me of a large black bear with long shaggy mane around its neck. There were no snout really, its eyes were black. The face was much flatter, like a human, but its nose was pointed, and no, not a snout. It had ears too, and its arms were very long, looking human-like, and it had a large belly. Its butt was also sticking out. I was shocked. I think in reaction, I slowly raised my bow and fired an arrow at it, which I realize is probably the dumbest thing you can do in hindsight. I mean, I was scared out of my wits. I wanted to get out of there, but as soon as I fired it, it let out a scream that I had never heard before like a cross between a coyote dying and a mountain lion. It was a high-pitched scream that started off soft, but came on strong and was almost like an alarm call. After that, it sounded like maybe a half dozen others responded to the scream. I could hear the response. I shuddered. I ran out of the woods and got into my truck as fast as I could. I didn't tell anybody about it. My wife and kids would think I'm nuts. In fact, 
I was in the woods again just last week. Not hunting. Just going in and out of there again. I'm not letting my kids out of my sight. That thing might want revenge for shooting at it. My husband and I had taken in a stray dog that we found along the road. I named him Norman because he looked like a sweet boy and my uncle was also named Norman. I really loved my uncle. We had Norman for about a month when my husband claimed he had seen a large upright canine running across our field on our property. He said it was dark gray, very lanky, a canine in body and head shape, but it seemed to be attracted to Norman. Not in a breeding sense, but the smell of Norman probably brought it in. Norman always seemed to have this strange canine odor on him. I can't describe it. It's not wet dog, it was something different. I wonder if there is a connection. We also kept Norman outside in this cage-like kennel, but this thing would come around at night to where his wired in cage would be kept. Our male husky, Ember, would occasionally growl at it through the window. And then one night, Norman let out the most horrific scream I've ever heard a dog let out. Ember was inside and our son had gone to bed. Now it was just me and my husband. I grabbed my rifle. My husband ran out to Norman. When we got out there, what I saw will stay with me forever. A most horrific creature standing on its back legs, looking right at us. Its eyes looked dull and smoky as if they were blind. It was tall and extremely skinny and had a head that was a little too big for its body. Its fur was dull and unkempt, much like that of a mop. My husband and I slowly retreated back into the house, with me in the lead with my rifle. It stood there for a moment, looking back at us, then back at Norman, then slowly walking into the brush as if its plants had been foiled and it was caught. It was contesting for the dog, Norman. I never fired at it, but maybe I should have in retrospect. The next two nights, it came around again, and by the fifth night, it was completely gone. The paw prints left behind were strange. I think it was an upright canine, but I don't know what it was. I've never seen anything like it in my life. Never saw it again after these events, and I believe that the creature my husband saw and what we both saw that night are two different creatures. My friend and I saw a very large, hairy, human-like creature at about 9 p.m. on October 17th, 2011, approximately 40 feet from our campsite. We were at a campsite along Highway 16 in Kitson County, Minnesota. It was a large clearing in the wooded area. The creature was in the tree line, facing us and seemed to be observing us. It was very tall and very hairy. I estimate about 7 feet. It also ran on two legs. It had arms and legs that were very long and skinny, but muscular as well. The head was cone-shaped, like that of an alien's. It was standing a lot, too. By the way its legs were, it just seemed to be observing us. It was about 9 p.m., so it was not light outside, by any means. As well, we were both a little shaken up and in disbelief. Since we couldn't get the best look at it, we realized, though, it was very scary. We packed up left and came back to our home. We never saw the creature move, but just watched us walk back to our trailer. I still have all these questions about what we saw and why. I've also heard the previous incident in Fergus Falls and think we may have seen the same creature. A friend of mine, many, many years ago, had a strange experience here in Kitson County, Minnesota. This was in the late fall or early winter. He was driving a friend home late at night. It was very cold outside. There were no moon, just stars. He was driving a pickup truck. They were about halfway between towns and were driving on an old two-track ice road, open for winter vehicle travel. He said there were no trees at all in the area, and they were, except for one spot, that they passed a while before this experience. They have always thought that might be the same spot. On this ice road, you're basically literally driving on top of ice. He says they were traveling about 45 miles an hour, coming to a crawl 
and they came to this huge bipedal thing walking across the road. He said they were surprised that they had not seen it coming, as they should have been close enough to see it in their headlights approaching the road. He said they were so scared but just could not take their eyes off it, saying nothing to each other at all. He claims it was around eight feet tall, covered in hair or fur of some kind, and was moving at normal speed. They were close enough to see its eyes, but they did not reflect in the headlights at all. Like an animal's eyes would, they were dumb eyes, he claimed. He said the creature was looking straight ahead, and he got the impression it may have seen their headlights before the lights even came close to it. They were terrified, but also puzzled. They said it was very clearly bipedal, and that it was enormous. They could make out clothing like fur on its shoulders. He said, as they passed it, and he was thinking that if it was going to do something to them, then it would have done it by then, since they were so close. The other guy in the truck was staying quiet, but my friend said he was freaking out. I heard this story when I was a young kid, and I think my friend David was about 19 at the time. He has never found anyone to talk about it since he's not that much of a believer. But I had always heard the seriousness in his voice when he told me the story. They had not smoked, done drugs, or done anything that would have altered their minds or vision in any way. They have never told anybody about this, but I know they have never forgotten. Wedge is their last name, and I hope that you might have heard something similar. I have tried to Google this and have not found anything else on it. Thank you. I was talking with a lady in Beaver Bay, Minnesota, who I have known for many years. She told me that her husband and Dan had a sighting in Itza County. She gave me his phone number. I called Dan, who wrote about his Bigfoot experience. Here's what he had to say. I had been in a friend's cabin near Clark Lake, Minnesota, and had gone for a hike. The sun was setting, so I decided to head back to the cabin. As I was walking back, I was startled by a figure that was crouched down and hiding between the trees. It immediately stood up, looking in my direction. I looked at it for a few seconds. It made a grunting sound and then turned and walked into the woods. I knew it was not a bear, because it was walking on two feet, crouching down and not on four. I ran back to the cabin to tell my friend who was there. He said, Okay, were you drinking? I told him I wasn't and he laughed at me. I was probably more sober than you are right now, I told him. I spent the night at another friend's house in Deer River. The following day, I went back to the cabin with two other friends. We found large footprints that were almost 20 inches in length. The prints, however, were farther away from the cabin than what I initially saw the night before. I also saw a tree that was ripped in half. It looked like something had torn it right down the middle. It was easily about 18 inches in diameter. My family and I were out on a camping trip to Camp Chippewa on the evening of June 4, 2012. We were going to get to the campground by 10 p.m. As we got there and began setting up our tents, we had a small campfire and began hearing a very loud howl coming from what seemed like the direction of the creek. I commented to my wife about the noise and said it did not sound like any animal I've ever heard. The howl was continuous and loud. I've spent a lot of time camping and hiking and never heard anything like it. It sounded like a wolf, but the howl was much longer. At first, my wife and I looked at each other but did not say much. Then we heard it again moments later, this time very near the campground. My wife was getting nervous, and we were getting ready to go into the tent when I heard yet another howl. It was very close, sounding right outside the clearing we were camping in. My wife was about to go into the tent when we heard a loud crashing noise. I thought it might be a tree falling in the woods. I looked in the direction of the crashing and saw a very large object moving through the woods parallel to the campground. I got a flashlight, shining towards the object and realized it was walking on two legs and was covered in fur. I could not make out the facial features, but it was walking upright on two legs. It was well over six and a half feet tall and very muscular, and had an arm span of a few feet when it put its arms out. 
I pointed the light at it again, and it turned and looked at us directly. It made a deep growling noise. I realized it wasn't anything I had seen before. It turned around, walking through the woods towards the creek. I tried to get more of a look at it, but could not. My wife and I got into the tent and stayed awake the rest of the night. We didn't hear anything else until around 6 in the morning when we heard a similar howl and the sounds of branches being violently torn off trees. We also thought we heard something big moving in the creek nearby, but did not get up to look. We got up, packed up everything, and left the campground without ever seeing anybody at the campground the night before. We were the only ones there that night. Nobody had ever been there when we were camping. We left and never said anything to anybody until now. I just want to find out if anybody else has seen something like what we saw. We only told a few friends after all that we know and can trust, and now wanted to tell you. My wife and I are not into the paranormal, but can't think of anything else that this could have been. In January of 2005, my ex-wife and I went ice fishing on the Red Lake Indian Reservation in northern Minnesota. We left our truck by the side of the lake and began walking around the lake to find a spot to set up our gear. I was the first to notice a strange-looking man-like shape walking on the ice. It walked on two legs, was as tall as a man, and had two huge glowing eyes. It was also very thin. I kept looking at the frozen lake, thinking that I must have been seeing things, but it was gone. My ex-wife noticed it too and wanted to go home. We decided to stay and fish. When I saw it again, I called it out to her and she ran to the truck. I was afraid to go into the woods to retrieve my gear. My wife was very upset and wanted us to leave right away. We dropped off our equipment and left. When we arrived back home, I did some research on the internet and found the others have seen some strange, unusual beings similar to what we saw. My wife and I decided that it was finally time to tell somebody what we saw. We don't go back there anymore. I live on the Red Lake Indian Reservation in northern Minnesota. I've been hearing stories of this creature called the Gaki, and it has been circling my house, making a disgusting gurgling sound. Well, the other night, I was trying to get some sleep and I heard something coming towards my door. I took a peek, but it stopped right as it came underneath my window. I seen a large black creature with a large oval-shaped head. It let out a horrible loud screeching sound. I ran downstairs to call the police, but there was no answer. I'm positive it was evil. My neighbor claims that there have been a lot of disappearances lately as well, from all sorts of neighborhood pets. A friend at Red Lake called and told me that the other day, she was with her father and her younger sisters, close to their home. They were crossing the road with her father in the lead, when the youngest sister pulled on her sleeve and pointed up at the swamp. She looked up and saw, standing in front of a large cedar, was what she would call a Bigfoot being. She said that it looked like a gorilla, but bigger, and said it was huge, at least eight feet tall. She pointed. Her father also saw it, before being frightened and running back to the house to get a rifle. When they returned, the creature was gone. They have not been outside since. This area is apparently known for strange sightings and disappearances. The entire Red Lake area is, I guess. It supposedly has this mystic quality to it, or, as some of the natives have called it, a dark energy surrounding the lake. Probably a hex or something, I don't know. I just try and stay away from the area. It does not seem very safe. I was working at the post office in 1998 on the Red Lake Indian Reservation in the village of Benna, Minnesota. It was some time between 12.30 and 1 p.m. in the early summertime. The sun was shining and I was walking towards the town school, which was some distance away, maybe three-tenths of a mile. I saw something that looked like a huge hyena walking across the road into the woods on the other side. I can't say that I saw it very clearly, however, it would have been taller than my six-foot-tall brother to be visible at all and looked to be maybe taller, 
By the time that I had gotten up enough nerve to walk over there to where I thought it had gone, I heard this thing fairly close to me in the woods. It sounded like it was growling, walking around on two feet or two legs and seemed constantly aware of me. I don't know what it was, but it was large, hairy and dark, maybe black. It also seemed to be nosing along the ground. I was afraid to go over where I thought it was and left. At the time of this incident, I was stationed at Camp Ripley and working as a male person to the Air Force personnel stationed at the base. I was coming into the village of Benna one afternoon and was on my way to the post office to pick up mail. My husband, then boyfriend, and I left a church picnic in the early 1980s in Chaska, Minnesota. We were headed to a friend's house just a few miles outside of Chaska. There was a full moon that night. As we approached what we called the Hollandale Swinging Bridge, we saw a huge winged being land on a large cement post that supports the bridge. This is also near the edge of a cornfield at the time. The creature appeared to be black. My husband, who was a skeptic, did not want to go out to the car to investigate. The bridge was like 20 feet high, at least the cement structure, with a chain of rope. The chain was about all that would stop something from jumping off the bridge, but the creature, perched on the post, looking in the direction of the road from which we had just come from, was like it was waiting for something or somebody. It was huge. My husband and I's best estimation was that it was simply as large as a Volkswagen, the wings were spread out wide, and the moonlight glinted off its wings. It made a noise that sounded kind of like a crow, but much deeper. We were both pretty scared. After a few minutes, it soared off toward the south direction, flapping its wings and gliding. After this, we headed on towards a friend's house to stay the night. The next day, we were headed home and were passing that same area. I rolled down my window looking for any sign of the creature. There were these bizarre large black feathers everywhere on the ground right near that post. I made my husband stop as I collected as many as I could. I kept them, later giving them to my father. I think they're still in a box in the attic of the house that he and my mom are in. He thought they were beautiful, but I don't know if they were ever tested to see if they were from this creature or not. My husband and I were so scared we did not tell anybody about it, other than my father, so I'm not sure if anybody would believe us. We have both joked about it from time to time, but it was something we really believe had happened. Again, it was a huge creature with bat-like wings, and we both saw it and were scared by it. I'm still not sure if it had feathers, because where else would these feathers come from? My husband's only regret was that he did not get out of the car to inspect it. On a warm summer night in June 2016, I and my fiance were returning from a trip to a nearby town. I was driving, she in the passenger seat, as usual. There was a sky full of stars and a full lit moon. We were not paying much attention to our surroundings to notify us of a change in the landscape. I started to notice things like streetlights were now a little further apart than normal, which means we were driving through some more open country. Of course, we were still on our well-lit stretch of road. It was now about 10.30 p.m., and this part of Minnesota is well known for strange creatures, or so I've been told, but never really believed that until this night. I tended to be more of a skeptic, but after this, I'm thinking a little bit more open-minded. We came up to a sharp curve in the road. I slowed down, as we were making our way around the bend, there it was. A huge, huge, light brown, length of the body on the side of the road, standing on its back legs. The creature was roughly eight feet tall and seemed to be as wide as a grizzly bear. I had no idea what it was, but it was standing on two legs and as we passed, it turned its head to look at us. It had no visible neck, just a head and a very human feature. Unfortunately, the time it took to turn its head and look at us, I did not have the time to look over at my fiancé to gauge her reaction. But I did look back in the rearview mirror, and it watched us drive away. It was what I would call a Bigfoot. It kind of had this post-apocalyptic look to it, 
not like any animal I know of, just gigantic and powerful looking. And finally, it turned back around and continued the way it was going before we came, or where I assumed it was going. If that thing, for whatever reason, decided to be aggressive, it could have easily taken down our vehicle. We had an experience this past weekend, July 9th, at our summer cottage here near Pine Island State Forest, and I thought it might be of interest to you. We normally live in the Twin Cities, but head to our family's cottage on the weekends all throughout the summer. On Saturday, around 6 p.m., my wife and kids all went to the Mud Lake Pavilion down the road from our cottage to listen to live music. I stayed at the cottage to clean up, get ready for dinner, it was about 7.30 p.m. when I walked out of the cottage onto our front porch to get a breath of fresh summer air with some freshly ground coffee in hand. As I was looking out into the woods, I saw a very large black dog looking in my direction, but peering through the window by the front door of the cottage. It was standing there looking. I was initially quite shocked because I'd never heard of a black dog that large in this area. It was also further away than I thought. I could only see it out of the right eye and tilting my head about 90 degrees, but it was still far off. As far as I know, black dogs are not prevalent in the area. As soon as I realized what I was looking at, I felt this overwhelming feeling of sorrow. It then ran off. I was in utter shock and still am. I then told my wife about the incident and she did not believe me at all. I felt terrible when my son himself disclosed that he had seen something like that on our previous trip this summer. I checked the windows the following morning, realizing that the window the creature was looking through is within at least 10 feet of the edge of the property. The cottage is situated in a small clearing with woods all around. By the next day, I had convinced myself that I must have just been mistaken in what I saw. so. I went armed with binoculars to look for what I had seen. I was determined to find some sort of evidence. As a kid, I had played in the woods my whole life and have encountered many animals so I could differentiate between a duck or deer or a coyote or wolf. I also know that a bear would be very difficult to miss in the area. I had not heard any rumbling or crashing of a bear. In fact, the first thing that jumped out at me was a tree branch that was bent backwards towards the cottage. In my mind, this was not caused by a bird or a squirrel because there was not any damage to the tree itself. I couldn't be sure if it was caused by a strong wind or possibly this creature. I then noticed a plethora of small orange flags lying in an area in the woods in the direction of the cottage. These flags are landmarkers for surveying purposes. The flags were roughly 10 feet apart. It hit me then that this area was an old farm field. This surveyor activity was fairly unusual to me, but I couldn't pass on the opportunity to view the property more closely. I walked in the direction of the cottage, and once I had arrived, I noticed another small hill which was not apparent to me before. I climbed the hill and can see the entire farm field from here. There were more orange markers and also what looked like a well filled with large stones. Just a few feet away, more orange survey flags positioned on top of a tree stump. I explored a little further, and then heard a sound. It was a series of growls and loud grinding sounds that I'd never heard. I had been so involved in my search that I did not notice a small group of deer grazing in the field not far from me. Immediately they took off, and I heard the loud grunt slash grinding noise again, but this time much closer. I looked down a ravine in the woods through the trees, and I could see there a large black animal with brindle-like patches. I could see the top of its back and the head. It was definitely canine-like, whatever I was looking at. It was not a bear. It was standing on its back legs, and although it was not tall enough to be as large as my observation the evening before, it would have to be at least six feet standing in order to be able to see over my windowsill. The creature then dropped to all fours and ran deeper into the woods. I was not going to follow it. It happened so quickly, but I had a clear view of it as it ran through the woods. I was in shock. 
I did not go into the woods and try to follow it. I had stayed out there for well over an hour. I was confused, but immediately it created a map to document my findings. I noted the location of all my observations, as well as what I'd heard. I am grateful that I made the observations, because this, I am now a believer. I know there are other creatures out there that we are not aware of. I was traipsing around the burned over mountains west of Duluth, Minnesota in June of this very year. I had been camping and hiking in the backcountry by myself, stupid, I know, for two days and making my way back down towards my pickup when I saw movement ahead of me. I stopped and after 20 seconds, a seven foot tall biped with long arms, big hands and a massive head looked at me then continued on to walk back into the trees. It never uttered a sound or a noise, but its eyes and facial movements were very human-like. I got out of there, drove back to the St. Louis River. I've been back up to the area now four times since then and saw it again in August, but never saw it again after that. St. Louis River is a large creek that runs through the Arrowhead Wilderness. It is known for fishing and canoeing, in June and July, the woods are burned from forest fires, and you could see pretty far. In August, the leaves begin to shade the ground, and you can only see about 40 yards deep into the woods. The St. Louis River in question is an actual river flowing near Duluth, a northern city in Minnesota, located on the western part of Lake Superior, the largest of the Great Lakes, which is located in the northern part of the United States. There have been some claims of bipedal activity in this area, including a similar encounter in nearby Carleton County, a north shore in Duluth, and in the Superior National Forest. There has also been reports of what many believe to be a juvenile Sasquatch being observed near the Boundary Waters Canoe area. Those who know the area well are aware of the numerous sightings and reports of activity in the area. There have also been reports of a large bipedal creature in the Arrowhead region that was speculated to be an offshoot of the Minnesota Bigfoot, a bipedal creature that has been being spotted since the early 70s and even before then. One thing is for sure, there certainly is a great mystery surrounding the entirety of the state. In the winter of 2019, on the Chippewa Reservation in Minnesota, my boyfriend was out hunting for deer and was headed home. He came to an opening in a clearing, seeing a large red-eyed bat-winged being with a large round head. He was so terrified that he ran home. I was there, and he even told me what had happened. We were both scared because of what he saw. We have never seen anything like this before. Please help us. This being was so large in size, it was huge. I'm certain it was not an owl. The head was far too round. The wings were large and the eyes red, and were glowing. We've never seen anything like this before. It's not a joke. I know my boyfriend. He does not lie to me. Please help us. I'm scared we will see this again. This sighting happened right around the Chippewa Reservation. Back in the summer of 1986, I was with friends on Red Lake Indian Reservation in Minnesota. We were going to a house around 10 at night, a friend's house. We saw a bright light in the sky and bailed out of the car. There were three of us. The rest of the group was about 100 yards down the road on the other side. The light was coming in and out of sight. We could not figure out what it was. The light was pulsating, getting bigger and brighter. We were all freaked out. The light was moving back and forth, almost like it was searching for us. It got in front of us and stopped. It started to form into a large circle. The middle section of the circle began to light up. The light was all around us. It was like a cloud that surrounded us. I felt my entire body going numb, like this cold feeling. I felt like I lost all feeling, and the next thing you know, this light consumed us. It was a white, pure light, like the sun. I lost sight and feeling. 
There were no shadows, no floors or ceilings or walls, just pure white light and a coldness all around. Then I felt a presence, but it was calming and peaceful, also overwhelming. It was like I was in limbo, in purgatory. I could not see or hear anything, and of nowhere, all these images of my life came back to me, past, present, and almost felt like future, or alternate lifelines that I could have lived, if that makes any sense. Naked, in a field somewhere is when I woke up, convinced I had never died. We were near the nearest town of Red Lake, about 15 or so miles away from White Bear Lake. It's that simple. We woke up, butt naked in a field, grassy, having no idea how we got there. But we all shared similar experiences. I can remember it exactly how we woke up. There was a fence right beside us and deep woods across the field. There was a tall oak tree in a shed. We were all naked and our clothes were nowhere to be found. We all had miscellaneous burn marks on our shoulders and back. We all woke up at the same time, not really understanding what happened. I never felt so vulnerable and afraid. It felt so surreal, like it was a dream. And I kept trying to look up after that and see any lights in the sky, but nothing ever happened. Embarrassingly, we had to flag down a car to get help. Fortunately, it was an elderly man who picked and stopped us up, and I'm sure he was wondering why he found three naked 20-year-olds out in the middle of a field doing nothing. Probably thought we were hippies, but I feel like he didn't really ask questions and was just understanding to get us help. We've always tried to justify that night as a large dream or maybe some mass hallucination, but it just doesn't seem possible. I have no sight or memory loss, I mean, other than the actual event itself. Everything before and after I remember quite well. I've talked to other people about my story, and their reaction is all the same. Incredibility. My question is, why did this happen to us? Why did we see that light? Maybe we were chosen, or the light was looking for us. I now work in Ohio, and have an answer to this. After that, I began deep diving for information on other people seeing the same thing as us. I've run across some people that saw crafts or lights, though. I'm confused as to what happened. It has now changed my life, and I don't know what to make of it. I found some people have had similar abduction experiences, though. Whatever it was, the experience was wild. Bear with me. This might be somewhat of a long story. So here we go. To start off, I have lived in Cook County area of northern Minnesota for the past four years now. I am originally from the East Coast. This is when a friend invited me to her place here in northern Minnesota. I jumped at the chance to get out of the city and see some nature. Plus, I've always wanted to visit and stay in the Midwest for a while. As we approached the location, we turned down a long dirt road to finally reach her cabin. She's actually hosting a party there that night. Lots of people I don't know show up, but she wanted to invite me to some of her good friends and have a good time, so I agreed. At one point, I had my fill of beer, so I decided to take a walk out of the restaurant or bar, whatever you want to call her little set-up cantina area, to go see the lighthouse and water. Not too far away is the lake. The lake is connected to yet another lake, and a large wooden dock runs across the lakes, leading to a lighthouse in the distance. As I was walking down the dock, coming around a corner, I could see it in the distance, the lighthouse, and then I heard a huge splash, and my heart instantly began racing, thinking the worst and thinking it was a bear, and out of nowhere, a creature comes out of the water, running up on the other bank. It was tall and white. I watched in amazement as it disappeared, and then I ran back to the bar, or cantina, when I got inside, I told my friend what had just happened, and of course, I got a bunch of weird looks. I was just told it was probably a doe, but that doesn't make sense. It was not a deer. I've seen deer. This was tall and skinny and white, and it definitely looked more human. I don't know what it is or where it came from, but I'm glad it did not attack me or even see me. Not my story, but actually a close friend's whose identity 
will remain anonymous out of respect for them. He is a resident of a small town here in southern Minnesota called Jackson. It is about 35 driving minutes to the nearest major city of Rochester. It's about the size of two square miles. Population of Jackson is right around 1,200 people, according to the 2010 census. He lives on the south side of town and faces a rather large forest. There is a major highway to the west, called Highway 63, and to the east is a fairly busy county road called West Lake Shore Drive. The town sits along the Root River and takes up the heart of Jackson County. On the far west side of town, there is a small airport called Jackson Municipal Airport. It is one runway and fairly tiny. There is some type of sports club on the far east side of town. My friend woke up to his phone going off and his dogs barking. The dogs were straining at their leashes, so he brought them to the back porch. In his backyard is a large field of tall grass, and beyond that is more forest. There's also a small trail that goes into the woods, and that's where his dogs really enjoy going. But before he let them go, he saw his neighbor's dog looking out to the field as well, looking up into the sky, where his dogs were also going crazy. They were all chained up. After naturally looking up into the sky, reacting to what his dogs were reacting to. It was a little hard to make out what it was, but he claims he's seen a black thing just gliding above the treetops, maybe 30 to 50 feet or so. It was basically just flying in a straight line while looking straight down. The thing that he noticed was how thin it was. It kind of reminded him of a giant bat or maybe a giant black bird, but his dogs were going crazy straining at their leashes and looking straight up into the woods. He looked for a more minute or so, and finally went inside, bringing his dogs in. When he got back inside, he heard a loud bang right outside of his south-facing window. When he went to the window and peered out, there was a baseball-sized rock that had shot down from this thing into his lawn. He and his dogs went out after 10 minutes. The rock, or little meteorite, Whatever he described it as was now gone, but the small crater it made was there. As he was walking back inside, he noticed there was something else. The strange liquid that was all over his backyard. He said it was more like sap, is how he described it. It was very thick, almost a translucent yellow, and very pale, also very slimy. And after a while, it completely dissipated, it was very strange and disturbed him greatly. The next day, he talked to his neighbors and the neighbor also mentioned the loud noises and that same pale yellow gelatinous goo. He said his dogs heard it too and he also saw the strange liquid. That's when they both realized whatever this was it could not have been normal and it affected both of them. They both think it might be aliens but they're not sure. I know this guy, and I could assure you he does not want any sort of attention for this. He just pretty much puts it behind him. I think it's cool, though, that there might be other people who have seen this thing. In 1973, we lived on the outskirts of Minneapolis, and we were into seeking out ghosts and using Ouija boards. We were only about 15. We were with a couple of friends supposedly talking to a spirit on the Ouija board. When asked what they look like, the pointer stared at the board and began spelling out the words, Clowler. We were freaked out that we even got a response and told them to go away, and they did. Well, the next afternoon, while at a friend's house, we were outside on the deck, across from the woods, talking about this experience from the night before. While talking, we heard a noise in the woods from the left of us. We looked up and saw a row of what appeared to be humanoids. They were about four feet tall, light green and blue skin, large heads with almost no neck. And the next thing you know, they slowly moved behind the trees and bushes until we could not see them anymore. As you can imagine, we freaked out, ran into the house and told our parents what we had seen. Again, we said, we believe we saw elves, but nobody believed us. We tried going into the woods and looking for evidence. We never found anything, but ever since we messed with that Ouija board, 
it seems to have opened up some sort of portal for us, some sort of magnet to these spiritual entities coming to visit. I do believe that using the Ouija board was a way for us to find the things out there that we did not realize how it would ultimately affect us. Oh, and one last thing. Apparently, Clowler is the last name of a man who used to live in this house years and years ago. Apparently, he was also heavily into the occult and would perform rituals involving human sacrifice, torture, and worse. His victims including animals and small children. God bless their souls. He committed suicide as believed to be part of a ritual in the early 1940s. I didn't find this information out until way later, but it certainly made my skin crawl after learning about all this stuff all these years later. I almost wonder if the demon possessing or controlling him is the spirit we spoke to. Back in the late 70s, I encountered a large cloaked or transparent creature in Otter Tail County, Minnesota. I was about 14. I had told my friends about it, but they laughed. I didn't hear about the Bigfoot sighting seen along the river in Otter Tail County until the early 2000s. I wonder if it's the same creature. Anyway, not too long after dusk, I was walking towards my house from a friend's house. I went down an alley to get home, and from the corner of my eye, I thought I saw somebody standing in the alleyway, so I looked over. What I saw terrified me. I still remember it as if it were yesterday, even though it's been all these years. What I saw was a huge creature that was kind of transparent. I could see through it, but it could make out of its shape, and it was kind of glitching in and out, if that makes sense. Actually, it reminded me a lot of the movie that had not come out yet at the time, but that I would later see as Predator how, in the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger, the predator, or whatever creature it was, began cloaking itself, and you can kind of see how shapes in time and space bend around it, but would sometimes flicker in and out, going from cloaked to how you could see the creature. That's almost to the T of what I saw, except obviously I didn't see the predator, but this creature. It looked like a cross between a man and a dog, sort of like a werewolf from the movies. It was slightly stooped forward, like it was going to pounce on me and it was howling as it stared. It had large pointed ears and its teeth were bare and exposed. I remember it having very wide shoulders. The scary part was that it had claws on its hands which it was showing me as it howled. I took off running and I never looked back. Even though I kept expecting to feel its claws down on my back, but I don't think it chased me. I got to my backyard and I stopped to catch my breath. I never did look back. I remember feeling that it was still there in the alley watching me, but I did not want to take the chance of looking back again. I was careful when walking in the dark since then. I have never seen it again. I'll never forget what I saw. As far as that creature goes, it just vanished in thin air like it just disintegrated. So I don't know if these creatures are capable of cloaking themselves or whatever it is they're doing, but it scared me pretty badly. I saw a bipedal wolf here in Minnesota about eight years ago. I was at my parents' house. I was coming from my sister's house, which is only about two miles away. It was dark, and I was unarmed. I was about 40 yards from it when I saw it. Now, when I first saw it, we looked at each other directly in the eyes. It was skinny, dark gray, and had very long arms. It was also on all fours when it saw me and then stood up on its hind legs like a human would. It had a strange shaped head and huge jaws. It didn't make any noise or any smells that I could remember, but I could not move. I was frozen in place. I was just standing there, lost in its gaze. It turned away and ran. When I came to, I decided to floor it back to my parents' house. Now, my parents' house and my sister's house lying on one side of the lake in Chisago County, Minnesota. I have also lived around a lake too, and I hunt quite a bit. I am a very well-versed woodsman and have never been afraid of anything in the woods, but this thing freaks me out to this day. So the question is, what was it? I 
I live in a small town here in central Minnesota. I've been here all my life. I've been fishing and hunting in the area around my town my entire life as well. I'm an avid outdoorsman. I know almost every animal that lives here in Minnesota. We have had a wolf population in our state for a long time. I have even cooked wolf meat multiple times for family and friends, but that's not really important. I also have seen Sasquatch and Bigfoot in the past. So, this all being said, after all the experiences I have in the wild, I know what I see and I know what animals inhabit the area where I live. On Friday, the 19th of March, I decided to go fishing on a lake that is between 30 to 40 miles from where I live. The lake is called Redacted. It has a huge body of water that goes north and south. I fished until dark and decided to head home. As I was heading north on the lake, I was going through some water that was a little more shallow. That was when I saw the most unusual animal I've ever seen. It was an animal on its rear legs walking the south side of the lake. It looked right back at me and then took off. I've never seen a type of animal like this and I know it was not a type of bear or wolf. I've seen those animals thousands of times during my lifetime. I've tried to process what I saw and the only thing I can know is it's bipedal. I still go to that lake, fishing whenever I can, with and without my shotgun. I'm pretty comfortable even if that thing shows itself. I guess I should be prepared next time. There is something weird though in that area on the lake. I don't know if it's a cryptid or a sasquatch or what it is, but I think there might have been others that have seen it before. So, with all this said, I thought reaching out to you would probably be the best case scenario for me. Any help you can offer would be great. Around 1997, I was at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas. I don't remember the exact year for sure, but I believe it was either 97 or 98. We ended up transferring north to Minnesota for the time being. I was then part of a demonstration team there, and this happened one night late in the summer. We were practicing the night field. We had a long rubber mat that we used just for night missions. We were running the night field. It was late and quite dark out, as you can imagine. We were all spread out, about 100 yards apart, about 40 of us or so. The captain would blow his whistle, and we'd all come together. Well, we were doing that, and out of nowhere, we saw something, blood and animal parts, hitting the walls on the training grounds. It almost hit the captain directly in front of us, and landed maybe 15 yards away from him. It was a severed torn leg of a deer, and several other torn body parts of animals. Lots of blood as well. This is the only time I've ever seen the captain confused and terrified. He couldn't even speak. He had tried to stop us from moving forward, but it all happened so quickly. And then, not only the stench of blood and death filled the area, but a more disgusting smell also filled our nostrils. It smelled like if hell was an odor. We all saw it next, a human-like creature. Right near the tree line where everything had been thrown over. And what I saw, I'll try to do my best to describe. It had huge claws or mandibles and was very lanky, very tall and very slender, but also black and white. It's the only time I've ever seen anything like that. It's like if you crossed a human with an insect and, I guess, a cat or a panther. The captain actually ended up shooting at it, but it disappeared long before he could even get a hit on it. We evacuated the training area and were told to not speak about the incident. We really don't have any answers, and it still stands out as one of the most bizarre memories to this day. The following day, we never spoke of it, not with each other or to the captain. It's almost as if it never even happened. And in fact, our training continued the following day, but in a completely separate area. And to this day, that is the only time that I've ever seen something so weird. This is probably the one and only time in my life where I really regretted going camping. So, my experience happened just a few years back when I was at a campground that I was very familiar with. 
I was camping with a few friends up here in Minnesota. We were camping at this campground for about four days. I had never had any issues with the forest before, and I've been there many, many times. I have even seen some wildlife, but that's to be expected. This weekend, however, was different. It was dark and very oppressive. I'll admit it. I was spooked. We decided to first have a few drinks around the campfire. I mean, what's a camping trip without a little booze? It was late, but I was not yet tired, and the alcohol had not yet worn me down. So, we decided to sit by the campfire until it was time for bed. Now, it was about 2 to 3 in the morning, and I was still not tired enough, so I figured going on a night walk would do it. Getting some fresh air would also help me sober up before bed. I was walking around the camping spots, and I noticed that my friends were all asleep, so I decided to go walk the trail by the river, which was a good 20 minutes away from my camp. So I walked down a trail, and at this point, I'm pretty sobered up and I see about 50 feet in front of me what appeared to be, now bear with me, what I would estimate to be a 7 foot tall panther moving around on all fours. It looked exactly like that, a large black panther. And when I say 7 feet tall, I'm talking about a massive creature. Imagine a black panther the size of a moose. Yeah, that huge. And it had these shining emerald green eyes. It took me by surprise. I practically froze in spot. I didn't move for two minutes. I was terrified. I was already kind of spooked about the night, but this was something else. I slowly began walking backwards, and when I started walking backwards, it turned its attention, staring in my direction. I remember feeling so mesmerized by its emerald eyes. I could not look away, until finally, my body just reacted. I bolted running all the way back to camp in probably record time, faster than what an Olympic runner would be able to manage. When I got back to camp, one of my friends had gotten up to stir the fire. I told him, but he was not really convinced. He gave me crap for drinking too much, but I told him, I have never in my life been so intoxicated or have any alcohol in my system that I would see this black panther in the middle of nowhere. I heard some loud noises after that, and it sounded like this thing was around. I couldn't sleep for the rest of the night. Maybe it was just my paranoia, but this sighting definitely happened. Okay, well, that's the first one. The second one, I can't exactly remember where it happened, but I do and am 100% sure it was in southeastern Minnesota. I was at a camping site, and same thing, my friends and I were all sitting at the fire, and I could have sworn that I saw this huge coyote running all across the campsite apart from us, when all of a sudden it stops right in this other spot. Now, I thought this was weird because it was acting very out of character, and what happened next proves it. It stood up on both legs and began looking over in our direction curiously. I have never in my life seen a coyote stand up on two legs, not like this. And believe me, this time there was no alcohol consumption. I was with my family, friends, and kids. This also happened afterwards. Convinced that this thing or person or pranker in a costume was going to attack us, I quickly escorted my kids in the tent and grabbed my gun, not exactly sure what was going to happen. I slowly began to pack up just in case that I wasn't sure what was going to happen. Then, out of that, in the corner of my eye I see more movement. It's another one completely different in color, more reddish. It was walking right up to the next one, the other one, and they both pop up on two legs and stare in our direction, looking back at each other like they were communicating, like they were plotting something. Now, I knew deep down, I had to get out of there. There are a million explanations as to what it could have been, but not a normal coyote. I could not believe it. Fortunately, they disappeared and I sat up by the fire all night long, not sleeping once. I kept my revolver in my hand the entire time. In the morning, I just told my family it's time that we move campsites. Surprisingly, they did not question me and they understood. I would later lie to them and tell them that it was a large bear that was around the area and I wanted us to be safe. 
I am still not sure what to make of these encounters myself. Does anybody else have any input they could give? Thank you, 